Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this horse's eye using watercolours and give you a few tips and techniques that you might find useful in your own watercolour paintings. This is just the way I do things though, so it's not necessarily the right or only way, but I'm quite pleased with how it turned out, so I hope you enjoy the video. So here are the supplies I'm using today, as well as my reference photo and my pencil sketch which I've drawn out and taped down to my wooden board. You don't have to have exactly the same art supplies as I do to use the methods I use, but if you are interested I will list them out in the description box below. So let's get started and the first thing I do with any of my animal paintings is to study the reference photo before I start. And of course it really helps to have a good reference photo. At first glance this eye looks very dark with a small highlight, but a closer look reveals a whole lot more going on. So for this horse's eye I started off by painting an even coat of burnt umber down over the whole of the dark part of the eye but leaving the white of the paper for the highlight area. I then let this dry before painting in the pupil with a mixture of indigo and sepia paint. I could have painted this onto damp paper and allowed the paint to bleed into the brown area to get that nice effect you can with wet on wet, but because I wanted to control where the pupil was more carefully, I ended up painting on dry paper and then softening the edges just with damp water on my brush. I like to use a mixture of sepia and indigo to create this really dark black colour rather than just using plain black on its own, as it's a bit more interesting. Notice as well the shape of the horse's pupil is almost rectangular, so it's a bit different to what we're used to for humans. Next I paint in the whites of the horse's eyes, which are really more brown, certainly on this left side. So I just use the wet on dry technique to put down a first layer of watery burnt sienna and drop in some of that burnt umber. I did the same on the other side of the iris but this time noticed that it was a bit more red or pink in colour so instead of the burnt sienna I used a Venetian red and just dropped it in carefully. I then use the same watery mix of Venetian red to fill in the base layer for the tear duct. Next, and whilst the paper is still damp, I paint in the darker outside edge of the eye and the darker area around the tear duct with more burnt umber. I don't mind a bit of bleeding together here as this is just my first layer. At the start I just like to map out each area first to make sure my anatomy is right before I go in with darker layers. With all that dry, I can work on the highlight area of the eye. For this, I use a very diluted mix of neutral tint to begin with. It's so diluted, it's barely visible. But while this is wet, I drop in some ultramarine blue and a bit more concentrated neutral tint, as I know the watercolour will dry slightly lighter. Whilst the paper's still wet, I can then use a damp brush just to lift out any highlights as well. I then continue around the iris using this blue-grey mix as I think it helps to make it look more realistic and natural rather than just leaving it plain white. I also go back into that highlight area with some more concentrated indigo as it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to start painting the eyelids, but before I do this I go in again with a dark sepia paint just around that right hand side to better define it. So with that dry again I can start to work wet on dry to paint in the bottom eyelid. I'm using that same watery neutral tint, but using a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine can also produce a nice blue grey as well. I use a less diluted version of this colour in the corner of the eye where it's darker and start to lightly mark in the crease along the lid before softening any harsh edges with a clean damp brush. For the top lid I pre-wet the paper first before adding neutral tint, allowing it to bleed across the paper and then add in some burnt sienna. 
whilst this is wet, I also drop in some more neutral tint to the corner of the eye socket and let the colours mix together on the paper. I keep any edges soft with a damp brush and working outwards from the eye, I pre-wet the paper again so I can start to add in the first layers of colour to the horse's face. This base layer is mostly burnt sienna but I also drop in some burnt umber for the darker areas in the corner of the horse's eye. Now the area around the iris is dry so I can go and darken it up and get a neat crisp line of more concentrated sepia. The area under the eye is still wet so I can add more paint and have the colours mix and bleed out on the paper. On the top lid and still with the paper wet I'm using that neutral tint again. With watercolour I think one of the most important things to consider is timing and water control and getting those two things right can mean the difference between getting the results you're after or getting a muddy puddle. If you want precise lines you need to make sure your paint and paper are dry but if instead you want softer lines you need to work whilst your paper is still wet. I also like that you can build up your values using light layers and working from light to dark to get the values you want, but this also means you do need to be a bit patient and sometimes work through stages where your painting might look a bit ugly. This tutorial today is mainly focusing on the horse's eye, but believe you me, the background and the horse's face did go through a very ugly stage to start with. With some of the horses face painted though, it's easier to see what needs to be done to the eye. So I start to build on my previous layers by darkening up the bottom eyelids with more grey. I also intensify the darkest areas in the corner of the eye and on the top lid with more concentrated sepia. Now I'm going to add more value and definition to the iris and for this I use a mixture of sepia and indigo and carefully outline the iris using the tip of my paintbrush and I make sure I don't paint over the highlights. I use the same paint mix around the white of the eye on this side as it's actually quite dark here. I also continue this paint around the bottom of the iris to add definition and detail. I then drop in some more burnt sienna into that corner there. I do the same on the other side but try not to completely cover that Venetian red I painted in at the start. So now I'm going to leave the eye to dry completely and use the time to paint more of the horse's face. I'm not going into a lot of detail on how I did that today as I wanted to focus just on the eye. And to be honest, I did struggle a bit with the paper today as it's just a cheap cellulose one and didn't really like having too many layers added. But if you'd like me to do another tutorial where I focus on painting shorter animal fur or hair, then let me know in the comments box below. But back to our eye and now I've added another layer of more concentrated burnt umber to the whole of that pupil and iris area again. This was wet paint on dry paper and really helps to make that eye come to life. Whilst the paint is wet, I also add in more concentrated pigment to give the outside edge of the iris a bit more depth. And with that done, I focus my attention back to that highlight area and repeat the process as before. So adding neutral tint and a bit of ultramarine blue, only this time using less water. Now with those darker values on the eye itself, I need to build up the depth of colour to the eyelids again, as well as begin to add details like the creases in the skin. For this, I use the wet on dry method and less water with my watercolours. That said, I can still use a damp brush to soften out any harsh edges so the result looks more realistic and natural. Okay, so now it's time to go in with a really concentrated mix of indigo and sepia again. And I use this in the corner of the horse's eye working on dry paper and I also darken up the lines above the eye for the darkest crease. Then I add a bit more neutral tint to each of the corners of the lower lid before working a bit more on the rest of the horse's face. 
Now I'm going to switch to a small detail brush. This one's a size 00, zero and with this I can more easily add fine details to the skin folds and creases. I'm using dark sepia on my brush and mix in more indigo to refine the outlines of the iris. Here you'll really see how important an accurate outline sketch is in the beginning, so it's really worth spending a few more minutes before you start to make life easier later on. At this stage I thought the eye was looking okay, but after it had dried and I checked back with my reference photo as I like to do, I still felt that it wasn't dark enough. So I went in with another layer of burnt amber mixed with a tiny bit of indigo to really make it pop. And when I was finally satisfied, I added in the reflection of the eyelashes to the highlight area. For this, I used short strokes and the tip of my brush. I also added in some definition to the crease in the bottom lid, again working on dry paper and using the tip of my brush. Now to sort out my horse's streaky face, and for this I used a damp flat brush and went over the whole of the face to smooth it out a bit. So it's all starting to come good, but I haven't finished quite yet. I'm now going to use a size 0 liner brush to add fine hairs and whiskers around the horse's eye. This brush can hold a lot of pigment and gives you long continuous fine lines, which works really well for details like those whiskers. They can take a bit of getting used to, but make sure you add enough pigment and water to your brush to get the best results. Now the last thing left to do is to paint the horse's bridle and the bit of his mane that falls over his eye. For this I started off with some initial base layers of watercolour, but then decided to go in afterwards with some coloured pencils to add details over the top. I haven't included all the video footage for this as I'm thinking of painting a full horse's head at some point in the future, as my daughter is horse mad, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested to see. I had a lot of fun with this eye study though, as eyes are one of my favourite things to paint. It's always interesting to look at the reflection in eyes too, because often if you look closely, you can make out details of the surroundings, which makes it all the more exciting. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting or helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you aren't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, bye.